Hey everyone, Rob here from Dice Show Tactical. Today we're going to be covering T intersections. Uh, this is one of those questions that gets sent to me from time to time from viewers. Uh, another one is opposing doors. I get that one like all the time. And I think people send it because they know it's it's a tricky spot. It's kind of a shit sandwich. Maybe they're hoping I have like some secret technique that works all the time, and I, I don't. Okay, it's, it's it's just playing a bad situation, and you're trying to find that you know least shitty bite of the shit sandwich, so to speak. So here I have it drawn up here on the whiteboard, and I'm gonna cover one man and two man. But I'm gonna start with one man because I'm pretty sure that's what they're asking about because that's kind of the trickier one. Um, so you know, in my opinion, I would start on the far side. In this case, if I'm planning on going this direction, or I'm getting stimulus or noise, or, or I saw somebody run that, but whatever. There, there's some reason that is leading me to go this way. I'm gonna uh, stack up on the left side of the wall and just kinda pie that from afar. The thing is when you're doing this, you can't totally ignore up here. Okay, you gotta keep shoulder checking it. Now, anytime you're shoulder checking, you're compromising your safety. Sh shoulder checking is not like our A game, A technique ever. And what that is, if you don't know, shoulder check is like if I have my rifle here and I'm clearing this way, I have an exposure over here that I got to keep an eye on and every once in a while I'm, I'm shoulder checking like that. It is definitely a compromise and it, I can't stand it. Um, but it's kind of one of those necessary evils when you're doing a one-hand clear. You have to because you don't have anybody that can you know, watch that you know, exposure for you and you don't have eyes in the back of your head so you're kind of stuck. So in this case I would be clearing this way while shoulder checking here every once in a while. And then when I get here you got to be really careful not to cut this plane. Okay, because if there's somebody sitting down here, they're going to have a lane on you. So basically what I would do is I would quick peek that, turn around, step back just long enough, maybe like an arm's length, so my muzzle doesn't expose beyond this threshold, and then quick peek that, and then we're good to move on our lane here that we intended to go to all the time. Um, just gets real tricky here at the end. You got to be careful not stepping out there. And before I did that quick peek, I'd probably do a real hard shoulder check over here clear as much as I can without exposing myself in that threshold. I made a quick video using door kickers here uh, so you can see what I'm talking about. Lock and load. Let's do this. Straight down. They're here. Down. So now we're going to move on to two man clearing of a T intersection. Definitely a lot easier because you have someone to, you know, cover your six and watch that other angle. The question is, do they both come up and, you know, just handle these angles here, you know, each side handle its own angle? Uh, no, we do a thing called cross coverage. Uh, the issue with that is if we were trying to just this guy covering this angle, this guy covering this angle, a bad guy that was here would really not be visible to this guy and could totally see this guy. So that's the reason you got to do cross coverage. Uh, you do a similar technique with opposing open doors. I'll cover that in the video later. So basically you're going to do what we call cross coverage. This guy's going to cross cover this way, this guy's going to cover this way because they can see deeper on that opposite side than they can on their side of the hull. And basically these two guys are going to move up here and keep cutting that angle and cutting that angle and cutting that angle. Eventually they're going to get to a point if they keep going, they have like a crossfire situation. Obviously that's a, a no-no. So eventually there's going to be a point where they're going to kind of nod or indicate or they just work together enough to know, hey, we're switching. And usually you'll see them switch their feet. That'll be the indicator. And then both will snap this way, and then both will snap their perspective corners at the same time. And there'd be some sort of verbal command that's kind of dependent on the team, but it has something like ready, snap, or ready, whatever. Okay? Um, definitely works a lot better. The problem is it does require teams to train together, have some sort of coordination and some sort of understanding before the party even starts. Hey, this is how we're going to do it. It also requires a really wide hallway. This would be like a commercial property, hospital, school, something like that. That is not terribly common as far as SWAT operations go. We work predominantly in residential, and in residential, you're not going to have a lot of hallways this wide where you can make this work like this. But uh, this is how you would do it if you did have the space. Once again, made a quick video using door kickers. You can see it here. Lock and load. Let's do this. Straight down. Cops are here. On your mark. Straight down. So that's the quick down and dirty of how to uh, clear T intersections as a one man or a two man element. Thanks for watching. Time for the post video shameless request for support. 
you guys like my content, you want to see more of it, please like, subscribe, hit the little bell. You guys know how YouTube works. Better yet, support my channel. Go to my website, dyshowtactical.com. There you can find a variety of products that I make myself at my workbench. I make a variety of slings in a bunch of different colors, quite a few different models. I also make shooting bags. Any money spent at the store really does help me moving the channel forward and uh, making more content for you in the future. Thanks for watching.